Hey friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. Today we are up at Mimi's house again, my mama, here in uh, her North Carolina Zone 8A garden. And we are going to be planting a container for her. You were with me actually this past fall when my aunt asked me to create a container for my mama for her birthday. It was a birthday present from my aunt. And so we did, we installed it, and now it is time to go ahead and put in her spring, summer plantings for the container. Let me show you where the container is, show you the plants, we're gonna get it planted and then we're gonna do a little mini garden tour right here because I know we were just here a couple of weeks ago, but so much has already changed in here and it just looks uh, beautiful and fabulous. This is the space that we are going to be working in today. You can see that we have the unique stone. This is a Weston urn right here and this is what we're going to be planting in. Mimi's garden, right, there's zero grass lawn. It is completely filled with plants, perennials, shrubs. That's her vast majority. There are, she does some annuals, but for the most part, it is perennials and shrubs. Sweet little Western urn sticking up right here in the middle of the flower bed that is right alongside their driveway. That is their kitchen windows that you can see right there. So this is a high visibility area where we're going to plant the Western urn. In the back of Johnny, of course, I have all of my supplies, beginning with, of course, Proven Winter's Potting Soil, Land and Seed Compost, my Biotone Starter Fertilizer that I always use. Of course, we'll add in a little bit of the continuous release plant food. Those are the main components, right? Well, less chalk plants, my friends. This container is on the smaller side. It's not extremely deep. We're gonna go ahead and kind of quote jam pack it so that it will be nice and full because we have, Mimi has been so kind to allow her garden to be opened for the our Creekside Signature Experience. So the people who were coming to the Signature Experience get to come take a tour of Mimi's garden. They're gonna see the container. So we want it to look really great. Uh, that's gonna be at the end of June. This area right now is in full shade. It will get a couple of hours of uh, midday sun. So we're gonna kind of, we're skirting between full sun, shade, back and forth. The main uh, thriller of this container is going to be our Surefire Rose Begonia. Um, if you've been around me for any length of time, you know how much I adore the Surefires. They can do full sun or full shade. This will get nice and tall and filled in. It will be the height of the show and this will be our only flowers in this container. So Surefire Rose in this container, it's going to be probably in that 12 to 14 inches. When you're looking at your tag where it says 12 to 24, that is your height. 12 is gonna be more in a container. 24 is gonna be more in the landscape. Again, it can do anything from full sun to full shade. So we have that. Then we're gonna do a really cute, fun, new coleus. This is a really nice chartreuse, very uh, segmented, right? Very kind of frilly looking coleus. So we're gonna do this. This is gonna be nice and petite. This will be our pop of color. This also can do anywhere from full sun to full shade. I said, maybe let's try it. Let's see how it does here in this kind of mixed uh, sun environment. Let's see what color it turns. So we're gonna do that. That's gonna be more of the filler. Another filler that we're gonna have is this brand new, this is the Shadowland Sound of Music Hosta from Proven Winners. It is so incredibly gorgeous. Love that color on it. Nice and kind of a bluish green on the outside margins, a little more chartreuse on the inside. Now you will notice that this is a quart container. <laughs> Sound of Music is going to get to be a rather large hosta, but it is a quart right now. It was a baby, uh, and so <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna say a prayer that it'll be great for this season. Um, but mature, it will be 30 to 32 inches tall. That will include your flowerscapes, and then the spacing on the back says a minimum of uh, 60 inches. <laughs> so, my friends, um, I know that we're gonna be pushing the limit on this hosta. Never ever would I put like a gallon size of this hosta in that container. It just would not work. 
but because it is a small hosta, it is a baby hosta, I think she will do just fine for this one season and then in the fall Mimi takes it out and adds it to the garden. So if you're looking at putting perennials in containers, you, you've got a lot of things to kind of play with. As a general rule, I would say this could never go in that container because of the size. However, it's a small, small plant and it's going in there for one season. I say go for it. That's what we're going to do. And then uh, last but not least for, we gotta have a little spiller, right? Nothing too crazy, but this is the variegated Swedish Ivy. I just love the color. I just think that is just going to be fabulous because it has kind of opposite of the foliage of the Sound of Music in the fact of that it's green on the inside and then it's white on the edges. It is, you can see that it's going to trail over it is that part is a plectranthus uh, so it has kind of a waxier leaf to it it will be six to 18 inches uh, tall and then the spread is about 16 inches as well now if it gets starts to get a little too long in the western urn then all mimi has to do is give it a little haircut right because uh, it could, I don't know, I've never grown this particular plant, but I have a feeling that if it were to trail over and go on the ground, that it could begin to start to root. If you want it to root, fine, that's okay. But if you don't, then just keep it trimmed so that it doesn't make contact with the soil. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get these planted up in the unique stone and show you how, exactly how to do it. And then we're gonna take a little uh, mini garden tour because, uh-huh, dear heavens, y'all, I'm telling you, so many gorgeous things happening in this garden that I can't wait to show you. Mimi had already gotten a head start on me with the pot. So she's already put her land and sea in the bottom, had put some soil in it, but she ran out. So I came in and just top dressed it with the Proven Winners Potting Soil. And then of course the Biotone Starter Fertilizer because that is an absolute key into having some happy plants is to have happy roots. Remember, happy roots equals happy shoots. So we've got that in there. I'm going to go ahead and because, yes, we're using the Proven Winners uh, Potting Soil and it has some of the time release fertilizer in there, um, I am going to add a little more. Mimi does not need to be worrying about doing any kind of water soluble fertilizer. So we're just gonna add a little bit extra in there and it will be fine. Now you can add, of course, the continuous release fertilizer. You can add it, you know, to the bottom of the hole. You can do what I did when you're doing a container and just mix it in and it will be just fine. The interesting thing about this container is that you really can see it from all angles. So a 360 degree angle, you can see this. However, I'm gonna go ahead and plant it um, primarily thinking of coming down the driveway because she has a she has a little stone path right here like this is going to be more quote the back and then this will be the front yes that's what we're going to do i think okay i'm sitting here changing my mind do we put surefire in the middle well, maybe let's do that. Okay, see y'all, this is why, yes, I have a plan when I think about uh, doing containers, gardening in general rather, but sometimes, you know, I just have to get into the space and like be in it and think about it. And then I change my mind. I was thinking that this was gonna be in the back. However, we're gonna change our mind and put this one more in the center. There we go. All right, easy as that. Surefire begonia, she's in the center. Now let's go um, thinking of her perennials that are around me. She has got multiples in here that are gonna have some height. However, where I am sitting, I'm actually sitting on some of her hyacinths, I think. Um, we're gonna put more of the plectranthus on this side so it can spill over. And then we'll do the hosta and let's do the coleus next. So I've got, that surefire in the middle, that is kind of, you know, my thriller. Then I'm going in with the coleus that is going to be a filler. So we're gonna go put this in there, right here. Now the coleus and the begonia, all of these plants are really going to intermingle all together. Like it is going to be one big, huge mass of a plant. 
Then let's go ahead and come in with the sound of music. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna stick it. Well, we'll wait. We'll do all the tags at once together. So we've got this, out we go. A lot of people ask how um, Mimi and myself keep deer out of our gardens. Um, praise the Lord, we don't have problems with deer. The only reason that I can really honestly give credit to that is perhaps because we have so much natural native landscape around us that the deer don't need to eat the plants. And we also have hunters around here. People that like to hunt deer, they eat deer, um, perhaps that is it, I don't know. But we are blessed not to have deer here at, in our, <laughs> in our neck of the woods. So the hosta is here, kind of do her a little bit off to the side. Now, if I feel like, or Mimi feels like, the surefire is starting to take over anything, um, and really all three of, four of these plants, like the surefire, the coleus, and then even the Swedish ivy, she can easily come in here and prune them. Because if there's a plant that we want to give um, preference to, it would be the hosta. We want that one to grow up nice and big and happy for sure because it's the perennial. As a general rule, your annuals can take pruning very well. I cannot think of a annual that I would say uh, don't prune. The exception may be a grass, right? Um, an ornamental annual grass. But other than that, they do really well to being pruned. All right. Now, y'all, it is simple as that right now. It doesn't look I mean, yes, it's very colorful and it's very pretty, but yes, are there still holes? Absolutely. But remember, we're planting this for longevity and this is not an extremely deep pot. Here in the South, right, our number one uh, issue when we're growing, especially in the, you know, the summer is our heat and humidity and trying to keep up with watering. None of Mimi's gardens are on irrigation. So anything that has to be watered is either um, the good Lord provides that with rain or it is that she hand waters it. So I don't want to overstuff this container now. The signature experience is not this weekend. It is still, uh, you know, a good two months away. So we've got plenty of time for these plants to fill in and I don't want to overstuff it. Remember when we're planting containers and or the landscape, keep your life circumstances in mind. Understand what's happening in your life and why you are planting and that will um, really kind of determine how you go about planting both your landscape and your containers. Some years we just need it really simple. We just, we, you know, life is crazy. You don't have time to be out in the garden maybe as much. Maybe you have um, a brand new baby in your life. Maybe you have aging parents. Maybe you have um, a medical emergency of your own. Maybe you have, you're just moved, right? The list goes on and on and on and on. So some years we have to keep it really simple and very basic and just do what we can. And then other years, like, <laughs> For us this year, personally, we're hosting a wedding and a signature experience. So we have a lot of eyes that are going to be on our gardens, so we're building them up. Kind of the same thing here with Mimi, right? So she has people that are going to be up close and personal. She wants it to look good. We've got two months for this to all fill in, and it will be fabulous. So what I'm going to do right now is get this cleaned up, get all my supplies back in. Then we're going to do a little quick little garden tour, and I'll show you this up close. Now it's time for a little garden tour. All right. Start first with the container that we just did and got it all nice and watered. Everybody has a good drink of water. We are currently experiencing uh, normal conditions as far as temperature, maybe even a little bit cooler than normal. So Mimi's not gonna have to worry about watering this anytime soon. Last week we were in the 90s. This week, this morning was 37 degrees. So. Ah, welcome to North Carolina in the spring. You can see we've got plenty of room here for everybody to fill in. It will not take long for those plants to get nice and full in there. And then the plectranthus, that variegated Swedish ivy, will spill over as well. So fun little pop of color right here. Nice pink flowers, uh, different colors, different textures, different heights, you name it. We got it going on. All right, I'm gonna try to uh, share 
a little bit of everything in this garden. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna back out of here and we're gonna start up here because you know Mimi is kind of the queen of containers and pots and putting them together. This is one that I just love. It has developed quite a lot since we were just here a few weeks ago. Um, and she's got three more of the unique stone. This is like the bath rope and weave, I think, containers. Same color, same style, just different sizes. So she's got this beautiful uh, frosted euchre in here, nice purple with some of that frost in it. Then she has got this gorgeous, gorgeous hosta. This is uh, a blue one. I'll have to look here in just a second. And then she has got her ghost fern right here. Just I love ghost ferns because they have that beautiful silver foliage to it. It is a cross between a lady fern and a Japanese painted fern. And that gives it its uh, fun color. I'm sitting here looking at the tag. Um, she told me before we start, oh, Blue Angel, that's what it is, Blue Angel. So nice, big, really pretty Blue Angel. Her runners right now are just going great. She has multiples in her gardens, all different varieties. So you can see some that have the variegation, right? And then she has some that are just that beautiful, nice, you know, traditional solid green. But everybody is doing the really sweet, true blue flowers. These are great perennials for your shade garden. We're gonna just go around and then we'll come back to where we started here. If you are familiar with Mimi's garden, then you know that she is quite famous for her massive mature azaleas. You might notice they look a little different than when we were here a couple weeks ago. Mimi has, it's, and she currently still is, going through the process of chopping all of her <laughs> azaleas down. Now this might give some of you heart attacks and panic attacks, knowing that she's gonna have a garden tour here in, you know, two months, but these, azaleas all of her azaleas and you can see she did the vast majority of them all the way through back here um, these azaleas are 45 years old and yes she has pruned them in the past yes she has pruned them this severely in the past but it has been quite a few years since she has done that why did she do this why did she try, try to do it now or choose to do it now she is doing it now because the azaleas were getting so large and they were starting to sh really stretch towards the sun. So you know that, that they need to be pruned when they have a lot of the growth up top, but then they look really thin and spindly down kind of at eye level. So what she did is, yes, she went through and hand cut all of these azaleas. She said the hedge trimmers, they wouldn't cut through. They were just too thick. So she went through y'all and every single one, she just went in and clipped with her, uh, her little hand pruners. And it has been a massive work, but she is doing it. They will thicken up. They will completely reflush with foliage. And she does it now, not in the heat of the summer because it's less stress on the plant and it has plenty of time to put on all that new growth and to set its flower buds for next year because these traditional old azaleas bloom on old growth. So if you do it in early spring, like right after they flower, go ahead and do it and then there you go. She's also the uh, queen of fun and whimsy. This stump right here is this massive stump. This was a tulip poplar that they had cut down several years ago because I mean, it was like really close to the house and they were afraid that if it fell, which if it did and it fell in the house, it would completely crush the house. So they had it, they had it removed and then Mimi took that opportunity and turned it into a little planter, right? So she has got a rock and deep purple grown in there. She probably from last year, maybe. I don't know if she planted it this year. She's got some lemon coral sedum and then Look at that giant mushroom. There's these mushrooms just growing out of the tree. So there you go. Something fun, something different, right? And then of course you'll see all sorts of kind of fun whimsy uh, garden art. This was like an auger out of one of daddy's old uh, farm machineries. So she's like, well, we'll just prop it up and make it look fun. So there you go. We're gonna kind of stay on this side. So she has got holly ferns in here. Um, she has little paths that you will see as we walk through. Um, all sorts of just a great assortment of hostas and um, things that I don't even know about y'all. I mean, like she's got Jack in the pulpits. She's got more Eucharist. She's got trilliums. These are cinnamon ferns. I know they are cinnamon ferns because they'll, they're going to throw up a little, 
um, <laughs> it was like a little cinnamon stick right there. You can see right here, she's got maiden hair, like a maiden hair fern right there. Here we have another Brunnera, that's a solid green. Um, but between her and her path, right, so she has the little stones, but she has these low growing grasses. So you can easily like step through the path without stepping on the plants, but it's just something fun and different. She also has the pulmonaria. I believe all of these, I could be wrong. I know these two um, are shrimps on the Barbie because it's, it's just a fun one. We did this, we grew this several years ago at the nursery. And so she grabbed some of those, but just gorgeous color. And you can see that they have those really nice pink flowers. So shrimps on the Barbie, she has got four pulmonaria in here. Um, I know at least three of them are shrimps on the Barbie throughout here. But coming back over to this just fun mixed border, this is why shade gardens are so much fun. Because you can literally have plants just grown right on top of each other, intermingled, gorgeous Japanese painted fern. Um, I mean, like, just look at all of the cool plants in here. Like I said, I don't even know what all of them are. But just multiple different types of ferns. Now, this is the other blue angel. She actually had taken this blue angel and divided it and put that one in the pot. But y'all, this thing is every bit of four feet wide, just stunning, right? You've got the fern coming up behind it and just like, this is my hand. Look how big that leaf is. Isn't it beautiful? I mean, oh, I wish I could grow hostas this big at my house. Just beautiful. Uh, and then you got more ferns, right? And then this one that she has in the pot, this is a sum and substance. Um, classic, right? Beautiful, nice chartreuse yellow. Now keep in mind with your hostas that the lighter the color, like your sum and substance right here, the more sun it can handle. This area actually does get some good sun. And so that's why she has it here. The blue angel, the darker, the bluer they are, the more shade that they need. So kind of keep that in mind when you're putting out your hostas. So if you have a sunny area that does only get say three hours or four hours, but maybe it's hotter sun, go with your lighter colored. And then all y'all, these are volunteers that she has down here, right at the base of her steps. Look at these ferns just popping out. And so they're not a tripping hazard. So, you know, everybody just kind of steps over them. We really just go up the center one right there. Um, really great. And then these hydrangeas are just the good old classic uh, traditional macrophylla hydrangeas. I want to say they came from my grandmother, my daddy's mama's house. Um, every couple of years, she'll come in here and she will whack them just like she whacked that azalea because they just get too big. Y'all, I am so excited because these plants are absolutely covered in buds. These are, of course, the traditional big, fat, classic, what we think of as a hydrangea bloom. This is what they are. Because we have acidic soil, they're going to be in that blue purple family. Um, I think there's a total of there's either two or three in here, but you can see they really take up this whole area. And that's why she does have to, right? Because I mean, look at the steps right there. Um, so that's why she has to come in here and whack on them every so often. Then this great little collection, again, to bring some height, she puts things in pots. So yes, some of the hostas are in the ground, but then she has some in pots. She has an old log right here on the corner that she has um, her little, some of her little containers in. She's got the hens and chicks. She still has a little container of violas right here, a little euchre. She's got some majuga. She has her cute little turtle. I would say that this is supposed to be like a, to hide a key. Um, I don't think they have a key in there. No. <laughs> so, you know, one of those little cute things where you could put by and hide your key in there. Um, that's probably what that is. But there you go. So, so sweet. Now, this is the cutest, prettiest, most striking columbine I think I have ever seen. A friend of hers gave it to her. Another gardener friend gave it to her. I have absolutely no clue what variety it is. Mama doesn't either. It's called Columbine from Dana. <laughs> That's what it's called. Um, so this beautiful columbine, but y'all look at these flowers. Are they just not exquisite and magnificent? I mean, you pull up and I'm like, mama, what is this thing? Oh, I'm absolutely in love and in awe. This thing is probably two and a half feet tall. Um, so 
And, it, and it's the only one. It only needs to be the only one because it stands out and is just, um, yeah, quite a little showpiece. Now, throughout the center, because she does get some sun in here, she does have a lot of the rockin' series of the salvias, and these will come back for her. So she's got like a deep purple, she's got a fuchsia back there. Um, so they're dotted all throughout there, but because they come back every year, they're a little bit small right now. So they will, they will come out, and oh my gosh, the hummingbirds, right? You can see that she's got her feeder right there. The hummingbirds go nuts in this area because of all the great plants that are here between the salvia, the hosta blooms, um, and everything else that she has that attracts those hummingbirds they do love it now one last thing I want to show you is another hydrangea because like we talked about this bed is interesting and you're starting to see we're starting to get some light on it it is 10 30 in the morning and so the sun is starting to come up basically it's right here and then it'll set behind the house over there so it's shade in the early mid morning and then the sun starts to come out she was having a problem here trying to figure out which hydrangea to put. She had tried panicles. They didn't get enough sun. She tried some max. They got, they just didn't do well at all. So she's gone with a serrata. These are, all three of these are tough stuff. So these are lace caps and y'all, they're clearly very happy. This is one plant right here. And again, look at all the buds. This just makes my heart happy as a gardener. I don't care what garden it is that I'm visiting. If I see a hydrangea that has this many flower buds on it, oh my gosh, I'm excited because I know what is to come in this garden. So this is just one plant. This is every bit of three and a half, four feet wide. Um, it's probably one of the larger ones, um, but all three of them are just absolutely covered <laughs> in buds. I mean, they all have those sweet little buds on it. A beautiful Euchara right here. Uh, I don't know if that's, I don't think that's Southern Comfort. It might be like um, caramel, caramel, however you want to say it. Um, and then of course, the last tough stuff, the little footpath with our unique stone right there. And then if you're gonna ask, because Mama does have a ton of the wind sculptures. So this is from Lyman Whitaker. He is the artist, I believe he lives in Arizona. So she has a lot of his sculptures in her garden. She has collected them over the last 20 years or so. This is her newest one. And so you can find them, um, I guess like at, at an art gallery. So if you're interested and you live, I don't know, just Google Lyman Whitaker um, and try to find a retailer near you. She, the closest art gallery is um, in Asheville, North Carolina, right near out of Biltmore. It's uh, Biltmore Village. And so I'll try to put the link if I try to remember um, the art gallery, but that has them the, the, uh, that, that you can get them because we've had multiple people ask about those. And then, uh, yeah, so another great morning here in Mimi's garden. A huge thank you for Mimi Let me come uh, play in her garden and pot up her container and do another little garden tour. Um, and so we have, we have Rosebud. Say hi, Rosie. So uh, Rosie is mama and daddy's um, Doberman. So she is their quote, Brenna. So she came to say hi to me. And um, no, Brenna is not here. Uh, Brenna is at the house because even though they're doggy cousins, uh, Brenna is, you know, a couple of years younger than Rosie. And um, Brenna likes to chase, play chase with Rosie and Rosie doesn't like to play chase. So <laughs> sometimes Brenna kind of, not terror, well, she kind of does terrorize her, but she just likes to play and run and Rosie doesn't like to do that. So just to keep the peace, we, I just kept Brenna at home today. So. It's always something around here, my friends. Anyway, as always, we hope you have found this fun, informative, and inspirational. I'll keep you updated on how the container's doing. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.